Good morning, traders. Tony Sycamore here. It is Sunday, the 18th of April, bringing to you a video review of key charts of interest, which are on our radar for the week ahead with attached trade ideas. Let's start with the S&P 500, which you can see here is the weekly chart. Now, this weekly chart made a definitive break higher out of trend channel resistance, which had been holding for about six months, two weeks ago. And the break was confirmed by the price action last week. Now, in an Elliott wave sense, this impulsive nature of this rally is starting to look more like a wave three rather than a wave five. And if it does turn out to be a wave three, uh, I think there is scope for this rally to continue to extend higher in the coming months. Now, we do need to be aware that seasonally some weak months lie ahead. So we always put caveats on our view. And in terms of the caveat or stop loss levels, I like the S&P higher, providing it doesn't break back into this trend channel. Uh, let's say 4,100, 40, 90 area. If it was to break below there, then I think you'd probably come back and look at this horizontal resistance coming in around 39.60, 39.50, and potentially a little bit lower down towards 38.50. Looking at the Aussie dollar, now this has played out pretty much well precisely as we expected. We have been identifying the rally from the November as a five wave impulsive decline. There's the wave three, wave four, and wave five at the 8007 high. The pullback looks corrective. And when a pullback looks corrective, it usually is corrective. And at this 7532 low, the rejection candle that formed here, or the bullish reversal candle, you know, whatever you would prefer to call it, started to give us an initial indication that a low was in place for this corrective sequence. The break above the trend channel resistance and the horizontal resistance was a very positive development and confirmed by good Australian employment data last week. And I think that sets up the Aussie for a push up towards 78.50 initially, this high here, and then potentially up towards 80 cents. Now, again, we put a caveat on our views and I'm happy to be long the Aussie providing it does not break back below 76.60-ish, 76.50-ish here would be a concern to us and we would be probably very close to getting out of longs if that was to occur. Moving now to gold, and this was uh, a really a really important piece of price action here. This 1677 low alerted us to the possibility of a double low. And the break above the resistance coming from the double low, which was around 1760, coincided with this 1765 low. There was also a 1765 over here back in May 2020. Really above 1765 for me, that was a really positive indication that gold had the potential to push higher. In terms of how high gold can push, um, I think it can get up at least towards this 1850, 1880 area, which is trend channel resistance. Above there, of course, it starts to look really exciting but at least in the initial instances providing gold doesn't break back below these former highs coming in around 1750-ish 1740-ish um, I would be looking for gold to push higher in the early parts of this week finally this week a really important uh, a really exciting uh, I guess development in Bitcoin because it did make new highs last week as we'd been expecting however once again we note that the new high has been met with bearish RSI divergence, which does warn that we're starting to see a little bit of upside momentum deteriorate. Additionally, you can see there is what I think a wave five playing out, and it's a diagonal wave five, a choppy wave five, which usually is seen at the end of impulsive moves, then followed by a corrective pullback. Now, we don't want to preempt the corrective pullback, and this has been an extremely strong uptrend. But if gold, sorry, if Bitcoin was to break below 59,000 and close below there, once again, we're watching this trend line support from the January lows. If we were to get a break below and a close below 59,000, I'd start to get a little bit nervous if I was holding longs. If Bitcoin was then to break below this 55,000 low from early April, I think you could start to see a deeper pullback play out. There is support coming from the 200-day moving average around 48,000. And then, of course, we have this low over here around 40,000. So they would be my targets. Um, if you're long Bitcoin and you're not a hodler, you're trading it, I would be starting to be uh, more aggressive in bringing up my stop losses on longs. Thank you very much for listening. If you've enjoyed our video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for more trade ideas, please see our website for trade ideas, www.techfxtraders. Thank you for listening and have a great week.